I'm what you might call a lifelong fan of Capcom's Ghost and Goblin series. I spent way too much time working through the original arcade game as a kid, cheered when Electronic Gaming Monthly named the Genesis sequel the Game of the Year, and was there on day one for Super Goals and Ghosts. Hell, even my appearance on Game Pro TV involved me offering a pro tip on beating Loki. I think it's safe to say that I love Sir Arthur. So when I heard that Maldita Castilla X was headed to Xbox One, I knew I needed to fight my way through this loving homage to one of my favorite franchises. Originally released as a PC game in 2012, Maldita Castilla tells the story of a once powerful land who has been invaded by demons and zombies. But don't worry, the king has a plan. He's gathered his most loyal knights to collect the witch's tears and destroy the demonic gateway once and for all. While this plan might have worked, Fade has a different outcome in mind. When the group separates, it's up to one sword-throwing hero to take out an entire army of ghouls and ghosts. If you've played any of Sir Arthur's 8 or 16-bit outings, then Maldita Castilla X will feel awfully familiar. Everything from the look to the way the hero jumps feels like it's pulled straight out of Capcom's classic arcade games. Our hero doesn't lose any armor or get turned into a duck, but just about everything else is here. And, as somebody with a lot of nostalgia for Ghosts and Goblins, I was eating up every second of this game. Much like the titles that inspired it, Maldita Castilla X is a straightforward action game where you fight through eight challenging stages and battle large bosses. We can jump and throw a sword, and that's about it. We'll occasionally run into a treasure chest that gives us a new weapon or fairy helper, but once you die, it's back to throwing swords. For as difficult as the game often is, it's never as punishing as those old-school arcade games. It helps that you don't have to start the stage over every time you continue. The generous checkpoints will help most people get through the game without rage quitting too many times. That's not to say the game is easy, because it definitely is not. This is a challenging game for people who grew up loving this type of difficulty. The most frustrating moments come whenever the game switches from the typical horizontal jog to a vertical climb. Even with extra weapons, the controls never feel like they're ready to handle the vertical action. Maldita Castilla X already has purposely stiff gameplay, and suffering through these sections only helps to remind me how far we've come in the last 30 years. It also points out how limited the gameplay is. Sure, you can occasionally pick up double jump shoes and a score multiplier, but most of the action is limited to jumping and throwing. You can't pull off a charge attack, or sidestep away, or slide to safety. You just jump and shoot. While I can certainly respect the devotion to keeping it simple, most of the games Maldita Castilla pays homage to had deeper gameplay. The good news is that the game looks the part. The presentation immediately evokes an era of tube televisions and Reaganomics. I was a little let down by some of the bosses, but overall, Maldita Castilla looks like it could have been a long-forgotten Genesis game. And that's one of the things that kept me going, even when the action became repetitive and the bosses kicked my ass. I was interested in seeing where the adventure would take me next, and I was mostly satisfied with the journey. Maldita Castilla is not for people who get frustrated easily. This is a challenging exercise in perfect platforming and dumb luck. And much like the games that inspired it, I came away both satisfied and impressed with this new Xbox One release. I wish the gameplay was a little deeper and the bosses a bit more menacing, but Maldita Castilla X is a game I would have spent a lot of money on in the arcades. Hey, thanks for watching our review. This is the end of another exciting week full of reviews. We started it out with a look at Exeal followed by Daydreamer Awakened Edition and Adventure Lamp. I also spent a few minutes updating you on the progress of the Adventures of Game Pro Motion comic. I showed off the first bit of animation and announced something very cool at the end. You won't want to miss that. So do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 